I mean, it's it's you know it's hard to write comments. Um, it's, yeah. it's it's just like you do everything, and then it's like okay, now I need to go comment it. And you know, it, it sounds great in theory, but it's hard to get around to it. So we'll just try to make sure that as as pull requests come through, I think there's a note saying that you know we should be documenting things, but obviously we've been we've been a little bit feature happy lately. Uh, um, so, <laughs> yeah, so we've all been guilty of this. Um, but you guys, I mean, you guys have documented well, um, but we all could document better, <laughs> right? It's always yeah. always possible. So, all right, okay, so. Please give a description about Funkin arguments and class description in multi-line comment. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah, that's what you guys are saying. Okay. Yeah, okay. We'll do that for it. <laughs> uh, I think everybody else would appreciate that, too. Um, let's see. Where did that go? Where did that go? Okay. Um, oh, this one really needs to get done. Uh, where is that? Okay. Oh wait, this is not rest. That makes no sense. Okay, all right. So this download code, yeah. Okay, great. Hash validation error. Perfect. All right. So basically, this is some download code that was written for the um, uh, for the IDX source um, that parses the. MNIST image data, the handwritten digit data set. Um, and so we were just, we had to download that. So basically what I did is I, I just wrote this quick little code here to, um, um, it basically just caches, it caches it somewhere and it caches it relative to wherever this file is. So like if this file is in the, um, in the test, test idx.py location, um, then basically it's going to say, okay, what's the directory of this file? So it's going to put it in DF of mouse source IDX. Well, this is the root. So source IDX tests, and then it's just going to download this URL, the first argument to this file, and it's going to validate that the contents of the file, the hash of the contents equals this hash right here so that we know that we got the right thing. Um, okay. And so we just, I think we really just need to copy this code into, because there's a few things that need it in various different plugins. So we'll probably put this code in the util, um, the util okay. section of the main, the main repo. Um, and we'll have to change yeah, it. Yeah, I have so one util section. Yeah. I made one page for utilities. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll just put this in the main util section here. And I'll just, I'll just do this right now. Um, and... Oops. Well, okay. So this we don't want H A I O H T T P. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that needs to change here? Okay, gzip file. That's going to need to change. So I'll just make a note here that we're going to do this. Um, let's see. So copy permalink. And then let's see where's that pull request. So basically, here's you'll need to take this code, and this is the correct one. Okay, great. Um, I can't. I wish you could comment on files that aren't changed, because then you could say this needs to go here. Um, I haven't opened the pull up here. I will. I will do that. Okay. So let me because just because there are so many things that are changing, right? So I, yeah. I, I, I thought well, let me let me first do it, then I will get it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Um, I gotta zoom out. That's what's going on. I don't want to see the file. I might not see it. Oh, it's just okay. Is this not a pull request or? No, this is this is not. Oh, okay. I just made a branch and I. Okay, I great. Okay, I'm gonna make a pull request out of it. Um, okay, okay. And then we can just well, actually, uh, okay, this is weird. It's weird that I can make the pull request. Maybe you should make the pull request. <laughs> I feel like that's not going to go well. Something, something tells me that that won't work well. Um, so yeah, if you make the pull request, I'll just put this in a comment on there. Um, and basically, I'll just put the two notes that. So let's see. I'll put it in here too. So added comment on PR with link to download code um, and or cache download code. Cache download code. Um, and then 
we also have, let's say so, we'll need to, we will need to change arrow HTTP usage to URL lib 2.URL open, I believe. Let's just make sure this is correct. Um, Oh, no, URL left out request. Uh, yes, okay, this is what we want. Open. Okay. Um, and then change gzip. Uh, okay, change gzip part to only happen if there's... If... Uh, Right. Yeah, I created the PR. Great. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Oh, this is going to be great. Now well, we've got. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, let me add this as a comment. Nope. Oh, Add, so add, cached, download, and just add this to dfml.util.download or something. Or, uh, let's see, which we could, yeah, let's just call it download. Um, and then, let's put these notes. All right, so basically just, it right now uses the AIO HTTP library, which is, um, you know, the async one, um, but <clears throat> but this is now going to go into the main package because too many of the sub packages or too many of the plugins, the core plugins need this now. Or it's like the should I one needs it. Um, there's open issues saying add this there, and then we're obviously going to use it for the IDX source and we're going to use it for the TensorFlow source. So we should just put it in here. Um, we should put it where where they all have access so we don't keep redoing it. Um, okay, great. And uh, the previous TensorFlow files, I have changed them to work for TensorFlow. Awesome! Two. Yeah, I saw that. That's great. Yeah, so it's in the same same this this we are only. Nice. Yeah, that's. They that's just required a little change. Yeah. Okay. So, right. Um. Let's see. So model TensorFlow Hub. Great. Okay, that makes sense. And then let's see model TensorFlow. Okay. And then what is? The full name of this one is going to be um, okay. So DFML model tends for the hub. So uh, where's the setup file? I'll give you more of like a full review um, yeah. later. But I just want to go through and make sure everything makes sense here. Yeah, okay, so you copied everything from setup common and yeah, setup. Just yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see. And this, uh, this I have to change. Uh, if you see the TensorFlow, I have put the beta version. And the problem that I was having, I explored it a bit, and it turned out like I was using Python 3.6.5, and uh -huh. it was using the beta version of TensorFlow. That's why it was giving me problem. Oh. So you see, I've written the beta version. Here, yeah, right? yeah. So it cannot use the 2.1 TensorFlow. Uh -huh. and there is some problem with the beta version. So okay. when I updated to three, uh, the later version, then I got the 2.1 and then it worked. Uh, yeah, so no, I had a really, okay. Uh, yeah, when I first <laughs> added the TensorFlow models to this, it had a really tough time with TensorFlow because we yeah. went from needing some of like the async exit stack in context lib got added in Python 3.7. And that thing is, tremendously helpful for a lot of the stuff that we're doing here because of that double context entry pattern. Um, and so I just decided, all right, we're just going to go to, we're going to, it used to be Python 3.6. And I was like, okay, we'll, we'll just change it so that minimum required version is 3.7. Well, that didn't go so well because TensorFlow had an open issue back then to basically release a 
version that works with Python 3.7. So I had to like wait until they released the version that worked because they, before that you would have to like compile it yourself and apply some weird yeah, patch I to ProtoBuff and it was a mess. Well, first I thought it yeah. would work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's good. I, you know, it's like whenever they bump Python versions or we go to a new Python version, then TensorFlow has to like go recompile all their packages. And they yeah. have so many things in there that it's so easy for stuff to go wrong. Um, so yeah, that's a pain. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So I'll review this more thoroughly later, but, um, basically you'll just yeah, add you're... that in and then you'll use it in the test case. Right. And you can decorate the test case, just like these are decorated where you just say cache download. And then obviously this is expanding the arguments here. Um, so that, you know, first argument, second argument, third argument, um, so that's just because or else it would be really long. So I just put them there. Okay. Um, and yeah, then once you do that, you'll be good. Um, uh, and one more thing. Yeah. Like, actually, I haven't the classes, but uh, I want you to check them specifically because uh, in later it should not be like we have to change everything. It should be like we can expand it. So there should be a kind of general. So. I'm not very sure uh, if, if if that is right. Or what whatever I have done. You mean so, the the like the hub classes part of it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, because you'll so want to add is, more models that work with the hub. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't have experience. I cannot say whether they can expand or not. Yeah. So, yeah. So, well, and so we'll from probably that sense, we'll probably run into yeah, that. Is, but yeah, this is this is uh, from Google research I have put on the top that this has been taken. This is the very specific way of. Uh, doing the pre-processing of the for the BERT model so it's written this code is for from okay. Google research okay great yeah Basically. anything that you got from places we just need to make sure that we know where we got it from um, and yeah. then because we need to add the license for those things okay Apache too so that's that works great um, yeah. so let's see and let me just make it because I have to do some like legal scan stuff um, when, whenever we, we add code. It, there is a very specific way of pre-processing it and they recommend yeah. to use it. So, yeah. so I said, okay, just Good plan. Take Good it, plan. Just clean yeah. it a bit and let's take it. Yeah, yeah, definitely go for that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess up the, if that's the standard yeah, way, yeah. then do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, especially when you're dealing with parsing. Parsing is Yeah, so it's a, it's a big file, but I have taken the portions that we are using. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Was there no way we could just import from there, or uh, no? This is a different repository. I, I I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. So I took the file and put it in okay. utils. Okay. Yeah. Just of course, you know, if there's a, I th I think that that's that's a good that's a good way to do it. But of course, if this was some kind of Python package, then we could just add it as a dependency and import from here. Yeah. There, there is, there is, uh, there is one, but I was, uh, I was not sure whether yeah, we should yeah, put that different. Is... Maybe it will not be maintained in future, and then yeah, we have a problem. no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this is not a real package, so yeah, that's the only way to go then. Cool. Um, sweet. That look. I mean, this is awesome. This is looking great. Um, so yeah, that's very exciting. It's going to be very exciting. Um, let's see. Is there anything else you needed from me on that right now, or I guess you know, because I'll give you the more thorough review. Okay, um, just, just give me the reviews, then I cool. will go ahead with this. I'll have All right. Test great. Yeah. Thanks. for documentation. <laughs> So the SQL light stuff looks like it's coming along well. I haven't added much. I just added the update or insert thing because I I was waiting for you to figure that config yeah. stuff out. Before. 
it was way too complicated i tried doing it but i yeah exact the export problem. i didn't understand what yeah. you're wait, you're waiting for me on the export right oh. okay cool yes i've already is, I... uh, once once we are done with it uh, it should almost be okay we just yeah. have to set up the documentation okay great and then let's see what was this here um was this the load stuff or oh yeah load entry point Point, let's load entry point. Okay, perfect, perfect. So implementations. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so now we've got that. So now I can load them just by the path. That's great. Okay. Sweet. Also, uh, there was one other thing which I wanted to ask. Uh, yeah. When I was running that operation, no. So uh, the output of that data flow is mapping type, but we have different mapping. So it was just outputting the SRC URL mapping. But I guess in here it doesn't really matter because we just want the operation to run. But uh, is that the desired way? Like, is that how it should work? Sorry, I kind of missed the first part of that. What were you saying again? Uh, so, uh, like in the da data flow, no, our final output is of mapping type. Yeah. Like at least for now. Yeah. Uh, so we actually want the mapping of the feature data, like SRC URL and main date. But yeah. the one which that's outputting is just the SRC URL one. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Let me. Where should I, l oh geez, that's right, okay. Uh, yeah, for some reason it's displaying that huge diff. Um, okay. I think I posted something in GitHub, I'm not sure, I just. Okay, let's see. Yes, I need kind of. Right. Okay. No, I don't think I did, okay. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, and then this is so. Let me just. This is. To grab this so that I remember to do it. Uh, uh, so, like, how does it take the output? If I specify a definition, and if there are multiple def uh, multiple things of the same definition, does it select oh. random? Or Oh, okay. Yeah. So it just grabs the first one. That's what gets single. That's sort of like, this is, this is also why we need more documentation on those ones. Um, the get single just means get a single definition that matches this type. Uh, there should be, there's one somewhere that was get multi, but I think it was in another branch that I never merged because I was still work in progress on that stuff. Um, let's see, where is it? Um, basically, let's see. Where'd it go? Okay, so operation output. Yeah, so group by and get single. So get single basically just goes through and then says, okay, that it it, the first one. yeah, it grabs the first one and then it breaks and then it returns that. Um, and so let's see, PDX Johnny. Where was this? Uh, well, I don't have enough branches. <laughs> Not enough branches. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, let's see. Uh, where was it? Performance operation args. And I usually delete them when I'm done, but these are ones where I've like I've been in progress on something and then just like sort of left it, or maybe I delete them. Uh, it's a mess. Uh, ooh, was it example? It's one of these. Uh, by get multi. All right, so in this one, obviously, we just didn't break, and we append them all to the list. So what I need to do is I need to merge this one, or do, I guess, why, why so I'm still confused at what exactly we're talking about here. So you're saying that... Oh, you're, like, uh, it's not, uh, our current issue doesn't need this. I was just asking about it. Because, oh, you were just uh, wondering. We okay. don't, yeah, okay. we actually don't need an output here, no, but if someone needs it. Yeah, yeah, and I I ran into that too. I think you you probably also noticed this when we were testing. It's like mm -hmm. you you want to say get single on the mapping type, and it's like there's a bunch of mapping types, so you have to just sort of watch the logs <laughs> and see what the outputs are. If we yeah, had yeah, this, yeah, then we would right. actually know what the hell they all are. <laughs> um, so, like I was happy when you showed up with the logs. Like after all of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the logging has been really helpful. Um, let's see. 
Um, and that's the, that's the nice thing. I was explaining this to somebody the other day. Uh, so, our search needs to do export, uh, export code. Yeah, I have that export code somewhere. Um, and then, John needs to merge, merge, get multi from echo. Sweet. Um, let's see. Um, no, I forgot what I was just saying. Sorry. Um, let's see. Yeah. So this will be this will be helpful. Um, okay. And then I'll add the export code. And then, so are you going? Let's see. So what currently is where? What's the current state of this? I can't quite remember where we're at. Um, uh, for the SQL. Oh yeah, wrong one. Yeah. So let's see. I guess uh, we just need to add the export part, then we are ready to use the CLI one because uh, okay. it works from the Python. It works from Python. All right. Okay. Great. Perfect. Yeah. So let's see. Um, yes. Sweet. That's so. This is done now, right? Because I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So resolve. Um, oops. Scrolled up. Okay. If you have it on the same, time, let's duplicate the flow. Microsoft. Okay. Well, that doesn't make sense anymore. Um, Okay, insert or update. Um, insert or update. Okay, look up. Nice. Fix loop. Okay, yeah. So we just need export, and then we'll be able to successfully um, yeah. dump out the. Uh, what was it that it was not dumping again? Was it the features from that generator problem, or I don't know if. Oh I yeah, actually... there was uh, there was one thing. Uh, I think you added it to do the. Okay. We need to figure out what's happening or something. Yeah. It's an export on. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, and plus. Um, figure out way to hang on defaults. Work command for the generator. Oh, this might be it. Um, fix export. Damn, what line was that on? Uh, uh, I think I added that on. Okay, well, that's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out here. Um, okay. Okay, so to do... Yeah, that's not... It's the dev service dev run. Um, figure out a way to handle. So can you post that command in Git there? Oh, this command. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah, basically. If you use dash c, this is I use this sometimes. It's just kind of helpful. If you do, let's see. Oops. Oh. Oh, wrong. Wrong one. That's why. All right. So. Search for to do's added a pull request. So yeah, hopefully that helps you find yeah. to do's that you've added. <laughs> okay, let's see. And then so insert prediction to database. Nice. I think that's pretty much done. Um, so okay, and then we'll get rid of source on our generate image. Well, that's not relevant now. Um, this is a workaround for the generator export value. Okay, so this is the thing. Yeah, this is what I added initially. Um, so basically, okay. Okay. Um, so, bam, example maintained. I mean, it's, it's test, right? Okay. And it's this one that we're running currently. No, no, uh, like after this thing, uh, I don't use this anymore. I was just using make prediction data flow. For this one to work, we need the export to be there. Yeah, okay. So this is, but that's what we're saying basically is like you used to have those OS.system yeah. and then you exported, right? But currently yeah. it's not working. Okay, so let's just, I just, uh, I just want to see why it's not working, you know? 
Um, so make prediction data flow import prediction df. Oops. Okay, so. Data flow. I, I think I moved it inside. I don't. Uh, if uh, did you pull in the latest change? If you pulled it, uh, it it's not global anymore. Okay. Well, if I pulled the latest change, okay. Um. Oops. Let me make sure it's pulled. Okay. So. So it, uh, it won't be global. Okay, I see. And it wasn't global because you were loading in the yeah, you're loading in the sub data flow. Okay. Um, yeah, I should probably release this load from file because most of the work I did was in the other file, just yeah. the make prediction one. Yeah. Not with the load from file. Uh huh. Um, okay, so yeah, what well, we still need. I haven't actually touched this. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah. But basically, uh, I'm just trying to figure out because I can't remember why the export didn't work because it worked before. It worked semi recently. Okay. Uh, it works uh, if I don't have the config for render data flow. Okay, so if you don't have the. If you don't add the sub data flow, yeah. It works. Also, uh, I I don't think it works perfectly because uh, when we load a data flow, no, uh, the model pretty config should be of type model pretty config, right? But what I'm getting is just a dictionary. Okay. Okay. So I think we aren't doing anything uh, when we are exporting or for in the from dict uh, to any of the configs. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So, I guess that's what's going wrong. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. So, and this has to do kind of with that unifying the configuration issue, um, because there's config parsing code. This is I was explaining this to somebody the other day. Is that there's config parsing code throughout the code base. Like a lot of the code base has to do with config parsing, um, because you know we have to be able to serialize and deserialize all these things. Um, so. Okay, so, okay. Um, so I just added some stuff to basically do if the, if the class gets past the config arguments like without the config. So if you do, for example, if you take this away and then you just pass them as keyword args, it will automatically convert it into the config. Um, but let's see, I think that's in the quick start. I'm, I'm modifying the quick start stuff so it's a little more user friendly um, so that people could like get started with the Python API as well as the command line. Um, so, but that's not quite in yet. Um, the other thing is that, yeah, they will get loaded as a dictionary and I think that it only works one level down currently. This is basically just someone needs to spend some time, and it'll probably be me. I meant to do this over the weekend, but I got swamped. So I think I'll just have to do this this week or this weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, because that, that config parsing code is just very hairy. Um, Okay, but so basically we need to look at the export stuff. So I'll just make a note that the fact that because I don't I don't think we're going to solve this right now. Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll just make a note that we need to look at the export stuff. Needs to look at export and verify. But we are successfully creating the. Um, yeah, that test is uh, completely working. Yeah, so make, create insert yeah, data just, works, basically, right? Uh, it is, yeah, it yeah works. perfect. Okay, so then we're, I mean, we should be good to go then, right? Um, so have you tested it? I guess, have you tested yeah, there's it a with... Test. I, I think there's a test case in me. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't tested it with database. I'll do that. Okay, okay. So I think what, okay, so what I would recommend here is that... Um, We'll need to, and let me make some notes in the pull request. 
Oh, wow. I have way more windows open than I usually do. I try to keep just the browser and then the terminal. This is just too many things to all tab through. Um, let's see. Okay. So here we are. So we need to... So we need to add MySQL source to list of, is there even a setup.py in here actually? Okay, so we have a setup.py, but we had the setup.py just for the purposes of adding the source. So we really should not have this, and we should switch this to like a requirements.txt. Um, so, okay. Uh, we don't really need requirements.txt either because we're just telling them to install things within the documentation, okay. right? So, so in so in the tutorial, uh, we need to have them install the following plugins, right? Do you have a mal model TensorFlow? Do you have a mal source MySQL, MySQL, and we need to have them install, um, diff, no, there's one more, uh, I don't know if config YAML is used, but, uh, what else are we doing here? Okay, oh, the git features, okay, git well, features. yeah, feature git, which really needs to get renamed at some point, um, to operations git or Operation Git, but that's kind of, we'll do that later. Um, they generate features. So, that's uh, the reason why you use demo app was only for the queries. That was the only reason. The, uh, you had a custom, custom source. The yes, demo exactly. Source. Yeah, because the way that it worked before, right, um, we were pulling, we created a new table in the database, and then mm -hmm. we, like, imported... So we generated the data with the Git, the Git operations, right? And we saved all of that generated data to that JSON file. Um, and for everybody else who's not familiar, we'll just sort of walk through it here um, so you can see. Um, let's see. So usage examples and gathering data. All right. So we basically grab all these URLs and then we point all of these URLs at the set of operations that are going to go. And so we'll just need to add that source thing here. Um, so we point all these URLs at the, um, or we give all the URLs to these operations, um, which are going to do things like figure out, you know, they're going to pull down that Git repo and then run Git log and figure out how many commits uh, were in a given time period. And it runs, this is sort of the sequence. Um, and these are all the individual inputs and outputs linked together. And so the result of this is that it generates this massive uh, data set where we've got like, okay, the authors going back each quarter for 10 quarters, uh, the number of commits, and then the uh, diversity of authorship is the work metric um, and, or the work feature. Um, and then of course, you know, it's mapped to the source URL. And we store all of that in this, basically this temp JSON file. Um, and then what we did was we had this custom database integration to illustrate like how you could interact with whatever database you wanted by writing a source. The thing is now we have the MySQL database source. Um, and so when we make a prediction with machine learning, we could just interact through that. And so we've put the updated, we've added a MySQL database abstraction um, to the database source. Well, Agen, so Agen added a abstraction around databases, which is like sort of more generic to interact with databases than the sources were. The sources are specific to just storing like records or repos, right? Um, and so this was to interact with the specific MySQL database that this application had that we're supposed to be integrating with. Um, whereas now we can basically just take those operations and we can point them at the database and using this data flow, we say, okay, at the end of running the data flow where you scrape the data and then put that scraped data through the model, update the database. Um, so we can get rid of all of this. Um, we don't need to have them write 
you know, add this custom code? Because I think this is confusing anyways. I mean, it's kind of confusing enough it is, as it is. It's kind of hard to wrap, yeah. wrap the head around. So we don't need to be adding code. You know, I think this whole example can now be done without writing any code except for this little bit of JavaScript that you add to the front end. Um, so, yeah. So now basically this will be one command um, and it will just update the database there from the data flow. Um, let's see. So we will just need to, okay, this is where we install TensorFlow. So we just need to make sure that we install the MySQL source. Um, let's see. So this is the initial scraping of the data. So this is its own section here. Um, so we don't need the MySQL source until we go down here and we run. Actually, we don't need it till even after. We can remove uh, the merge. So, um, let's see. Basically, we train the model. I think we can remove this section, this whole section here, on uh, pulling from the database. Yeah, so we can remove this section because we don't need to interact with the database. We'll basically just say hand wave, you know, use the insert or update operation. And everybody will be like, great, I love that. Because um, <laughs> that's what you want most of the time with the database, just somebody to tell you insert or update, and it just works. Um, so remove pulling from data set, database uh, section. That whole code was just to update the database. Yeah, all of this is just to update the database because we basically added, I mean, what we were doing here is we had two tables now, and then we were keeping the data consistent across the two tables. Um, so we needed custom logic to do that, obviously, because or else you would have these insane SQL queries. Um, and so it was easier to just sort of illustrate how you might do that in Python, even though that doesn't, it's not, it's not super clear anyways. So we'll just stay away from that. Um, so we can get rid of this whole section where we add the extra table and everything, um, because we don't. We then imported that JSON file into the database, but we don't really care about that because, quite honestly, once we've used that, once we've gathered that data set to train the model, we don't really care what the data was, anyways. We just want the prediction from the model now. Um, so we get training our model. That stuff is all good. Making a prediction. Okay, so now in this one, we have the initial data set or data flow, which will just, uh, this is going to run the prediction, right? And so we're going to need to modify, or this is going to run the scraping with this first command here, right? With this original data flow. And then um, we need to add, uh, and then we need to do, okay, well, the prediction, uh, I don't know, is this going to be? helpful at all. We could save this to maybe like a separate file so that we could show how to make a one-off prediction from the file. Mm, I don't know though, because mm, it might be better to just illustrate. Okay, so because the way that this is explained right now is, okay, we ran the data flow initially on all of the repos all, or all of those URLs, and now we're running it on one of them, and we're saying, uh, store the results in the database, right? But we're not going to have the database anymore. Um, it'll basically just output the results um, for us, and we could have it store it in like a JSON file. And then when we run the predict command, we could say, okay, grab that from that JSON file. Um, then this might just be good to still illustrate how you would do a one off prediction. Um, uh, I don't uh, know. Maybe we could call it part A and part B, like, yeah. Fine. Yeah, here's how you do it, you know, here's here's part A, here's how you do it for one of them, and now part B, here's how we're going to combine these, what would be two commands into one command by writing this data flow, right, which is the data flow that you've created in this pull request that does the run and then update the database, right. Um, so yeah, let's say, making a prediction, so make, making a prediction, okay, and then modifying the legacy app will be change to run the one data flow run command where we're doing the new um, not the old data flow that yaml but the new one that we figure out how to export um, and then the gif remains the same um, let's see so, okay so we basically need to add add So we should probably change change making a prediction to making 
a single prediction and then add section. Um, let's see, what would this be? It'd be like something like, um, you know, making prediction and saving. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. How would you, how would we describe this? Let's see. We've made another data flow, right? Um, so. Are we collecting data or something? We mentioned that. What? Aren't we also collecting features? Yeah, well, features that was the initial, features. that was the initial, um, that's the first data flow is where we're collecting the features, right? So now we're basically saying, uh, this is right. This is a data flow for using the collected features from the other data flow, making a prediction on it and saving it in the database. So we need a more concise way of saying that. <laughs> um, let's see. So add a section on, uh, let's see, make your saving prediction in database or something. And then you talk about you know, you, you basically you dump the YAML file um, for uh, you export the you export the data flow to the YAML file. Export new data flow to YAML file. Include in this section. Uh, include diagram mermaid. JS diagram um, uh, to help visual explanation. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that I mean that's basically what you need to do in this section is you export the new data flow to the YAML file, and then you include that and you sort of explain why we're doing what we're doing, and then you give them a picture to show them this is this is what's going on, right? And you might want to illustrate. I might want to say uh, it would be helpful to add. Let's see. You can also say that remapping part. I guess. Yeah. Make prediction data flow. I think we had some things in here. Um, yeah. So it's probably helpful to add comments like this type of stuff between the various exported sections like of the YAML file where we can talk about like, okay, when it comes through, you know, when when the output of this operation, or we can talk about like, okay, now at this stage, for this example input, the output might be this, right? And then we can give a little, um, you know, block uh, JSON comment saying, this is the data that is coming out of this now. Um, and that will help people probably understand, okay, what's going in, what's coming out um, more than just what what are all these inputs linked together? Example of data uh, inputs and outputs. All right, let's see. I'm curious as to what this other person's data flow project is. There's a lot I've see, I keep seeing these data flow projects around. Like people keep doing similar things, um, which is great because it means that people like this stuff. Um, uh -huh. and, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's also interesting to see everybody has a slightly different twist on why they might be doing what they're doing. Um, let's see. So I think that is sort of the gist of what we need to do here. Um, and then let's see. This is so basically this first bullet is need to also have them install DFML source MySQL and this bullet point really goes under the saving prediction and database. Uh, oops. Um, is there anything else on that one? Um, no, that's it, I guess. 
Okay, cool, cool. I think this is this is uh, this has been a long this has been a long oh, one. Yeah. So thanks for your continued uh, your continued work on this one. This is definitely tricky. Uh, let's see. And then so yeah. Um, so Saksham, is there was there anything else that you wanted to oh, talk uh, about? Wait. Or, yeah. Uh, there was uh, one more thing uh, which I want to ask. Uh, so uh, we wanted to make predictions traditionally, right? So, uh, like, when we are dumping into CSV, how do we want the columns to be? We want to make predictions. Uh, not here. Uh, not here. It's another tool. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So when we're dumping to, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's right. When we dump to CSV, that's going to make things interesting. Um, so I think that the way we no, should... No, this one also. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, this one. I like uh, so, it, I, so I think it's open somewhere. I don't know. It's... I'll just yeah, I'll just go back here. Yeah, open. Yeah. So, okay, sweet. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot yeah, that you uh, did this one too. This is great. Yeah. Um, so let's I, see. I think I have commented it somewhere. Let's see. Predict target. Uh, so uh, yeah, so now when we are exporting it to CSV, we just have two columns: prediction and value. But if we have multiple things in the prediction dictionary, uh, that should be different. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. So yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, but I think with the JSON sources doesn't matter yet. But with the um, the set test failing on that, I think the test CSV one. The yeah. CSV. So what I'd recommend on this is basically we, let's see, do you have any changes to the CSV? Uh, I'll just go into the CSV file. Okay, I'll just show it. All right. And this was called, uh, what is this called? Repo predict. All right. So, Okay, so source, or no, yeah, dffml source csv. Okay. So, csv headers. All right. So, this is where we were adding things, um, right, as the the prediction for because there was one prediction and one confidence, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I think what we probably want to do is basically just say, um, Let's see, where's the features? Um, this is the reading. Okay, this is the writing. That oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Okay, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so I thought we were going to get away with something, but it looks like we're not. Um, okay, so... Right, the problem with this is that... Uh, what do yeah, we you've written above the, like, the CSV is very messy. The CSV file is very oh, messy. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's why we switched it to uh, uh, rewrite, I still don't right? understand half of what's written there, though. Yeah, in, the, in, this, in this file? Yeah. Yeah, this file is a mess. Um, we had to do a lot of wacky things to get, like, the merge command to work, but that really was not necessary. We shouldn't have done that. Um, so, let's see. So, what are we doing? We're feature field names equals set report data. So we go into every single field. Open file right. Uh, actually, uh, why don't we have predictions to be dictionary? Like, can you give me an example? Why do we want it to be a dictionary? Yeah. Well, so the reason why we might want it to be a dic dictionary is if we have like you know several models. Um, we have several different models that predict several different things, right? So if we basically took, uh, like we took a CSV file and we have five columns, right? And so yeah. we trained the first three columns, we used the first three columns to predict the fourth column with one model. And then we used oh, okay. the, the, yeah, then we used the uh, first two columns to predict the last column uh, with the other okay. model, right? In that case, we need to be able to have, uh, okay. right? We need multiple predictions. Um, and so, it looks like what we currently do here is we basically just jump through every uh, single repo. Then we wouldn't predict also need to change like, do we take as input in the model config? 
Like uh, now, is just one feature, right? Yeah. So, well, so that's the thing is, is you would only predict on one feature with with one model. I think as far as I don't know, as far as I can tell, I don't know. Maybe you could have a, you could you could probably have a model that could predict multiple features. Um, I know. I'm not sure. I was just asking. Yeah. I, I haven't well, seen anything like it. Yeah. So I think. So yeah, so this is the thing is I saw you, I was going to make a comment on this. So I saw that you changed, let's see, MCT, it looks like you changed all the models to add the thing that they should predict as the first argument, right? Yeah. Um, but I think we still want to keep it in the config. Um, so we probably need to change that back um, because all we really want to do is data prediction target. This is all good. This is all good. Um, this is good. Um, but yeah, so all we're really looking for here is to add, is to make this data.prediction dict, right? Um, and that way, when we call the predict method, yeah, repo.predicted, we do, we pass the thing that we, um, that we basically can just pass self.config.predict, right? Or self.parent. I think you have mentioned it in the issue to change the model. I'm not sure. I must okay. Have yeah, I might have. Let's see. I think. Oh, and then again, this issue is all. So. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Repo. Prediction. Prediction. Predict. Yeah. So this is what I meant here. Is by. Oh. Uh, this is self dot config dot. So we need to change all the predict methods. Oh, oh, yes, okay, so this is the problem. Um, so yeah. they pass the feature name they are predicting um, for sec. Okay, this is a badly worded sentence, sorry. What I meant by this is that we need to change the content, like we need to change oh, the okay, body okay, okay, of this okay. function to pass the feature name to the oh, predicted yeah, okay, function. Okay. Yeah, sorry, that was not worded well. That could have been more clear. Um, okay. I'll change it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, all you have to do is just, you know, basically uh, yeah, we don't yeah. use those arguments now um, because they already have it, right? They have it in their okay. config. Um, okay. But sorry, that was that was badly worded. Um, uh, minus in zone. Cool. Okay, so I think that, uh, that one's going to be awesome because now we can, like, save multiple features. Um, we can have multiple models running on the same thing without it overwriting each other. <laughs> it would be very helpful. Um because, uh, yeah, now you can take different feature data and run them through different models, right? Um, so that'll be great. Um, let's see. Oh. And yeah, so is there anything else then on that? I mean, you said how to figure out the CSV one. Oh, how to figure out the CSV. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I got distracted. Where did we go? Okay. Uh, yes. Not too many tabs. Too many tabs, too many windows. All right, so how to figure out the CSV. Oh, and I was going to show that here. Uh, no, here. Okay. So basically, what we do right now is we go through and this feature field names is basically um, a list of it's it's like the columns, right? Feature field names becomes like all the features that are going to be in the that are there. There are the field names is is the the column names and then it should be called column names. Why is it not called column names? Um, and uh, yeah, this is needs this file needs help, as you guys have seen. Um, yeah. So basically, all we could do, what we could do here is we could basically just say um, like prediction field names, right? And then we could do prediction, and we'll just see if this works. Um, uh, then what would what be like prediction one underscore confidence, prediction one underscore value is going yeah. to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so dot prediction. Okay, yeah, and then we would do like um, map lambda um, key. Uh, uh, let's see what we need to do here. We need to do um, prediction underscore and confidence underscore. So the best way to do that is try like iter tools chain. Let's see. Um, 
I might be making this more complicated than it needs to be. I'm probably making that more complicated than it needs to be. Let's just do this. I want lambda and map. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Um, prediction field names. So yeah. Iter tools dot chain. I'll map here. Map and uh, key. And then we need where'd that go? We basically will just prepend prediction and confidence. So just like you said. Um so let's see. Now the trick will be um, when we read them, I guess we just read anything that's prepended with prediction and confidence. All right. Um, well, I could do this now, or I could do this. Um, I can. I can push. Uh, let's just. Uh, I. I wa just want to know what yeah. format we wanted to do. Yeah. So basically, if we do this, um, I wonder what will happen. So you said this test is failing right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way this is. Okay. Okay, because then we can just run this test, and then we'll we'll be able to see right away. Okay, right. mm -hmm. so uh, them test source test CSV. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is still failing, no, of course. We we having. We have to change one more paper. Yeah. But, okay, so let's see. Tools to change. Do I have iter tools? Nope. Port iter tools. I'm not sure if I'm using this correctly, but we'll find out. Okay. I mean, change the writing part. <laughs> oh, yeah. It. Yeah, we have to change yeah. the writing part. So let's see, and then we have to do. Yeah, so if prediction in repo data. Um, for key comma value in repo dot prediction dot items, we'll just do row prediction. We can at least know if this works, and then if this works, then you can just continue with this, right? So let's see. So we'll just try the writing out first. Repo data or value. Okay, so yeah, this should be what we want here, provided that editor tool stuff did what it was supposed to. No, oh, uh, I said, yeah, damn it. Okay. Set no paste. What's the problem with them? Stir object has no attribute items. Row prediction items. Mm. That's weird. No. Oh, because we. Oh, sorry. I iterated over row prediction. It's not in row prediction. It's in repo data dot prediction. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a repo data. No wonder it's not there. Prediction target name, confidence cart target name, dick contains fields not in the field name. Okay. Oh, well, we probably forgot to add them somewhere because that should be here. Okay, yeah, so this is probably wrong. Um, uh, do we need self plot CSV headers anymore? Do we need what? Uh, the third line. The, uh, like that oh, line. yeah, we do not. Yeah, thank you. Okay, what's going on here? Prediction. Okay, we got something. Yeah. Um, so I, it looks like it wrote it out correctly, maybe? Let's see. Test update. Uh, okay, so this thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, oh yeah, okay, that, that works. Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's just check that test case one more time here. Um, oh yeah, that's going to do it every, I forgot that this has subtests for every single file extension. <laughs> um, Target name, 
assert equal target name value. Okay, so this type of thing works. Um, I guess if you if you uh, if you have time to mess with this, it looks yeah. like it is dumping something yeah, correctly. So, yeah. so you'll uh, just yeah. have to rewrite the. You'll have to modify the tests, and you'll okay. have to modify yeah. the reading, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And let's see. All right, let me push this. Oh, uh, what is the reading code? It's in. It is also an abomination and right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, so anything that's prepended, right? Okay, so it's probably going to be yeah. change. Let's see. Change, uh, let's see. Repo data. So CSV meta. Set the features. Okay, parse headers as we. Added. Okay, so um, to do change this so that anything with prediction and confidence uh, becomes a prediction becomes prediction data. All right. So that should yeah. be good. Cool. cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. That'll be great. That'll be really great. Um, fix CSV ish CSV writing. All right. I don't know if I have permissions to push that. We'll find out. Yay. Okay. Sweet. So let's make a note of that in the meeting minutes, too. So. Repo uh, feature specific predictions. Uh, looking good. So we just need to uh, reverse changes to models context predict functions uh, function uh, arguments. There we go. That's yeah. That's how we should say that. And then we need to um, uh, fix CSV reading writing. So the writing needs some cleanup, but mostly fixed. All right. Sweet. Cool. 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 Um, let's see. Um, anything else on your front, Agen? No, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. And then we had some other people who jumped on and said they were going to add some uh, models or something. Yeah. Um, people looking at GSOC stuff, hoping to hoping to do some proposals. Um, yeah. And then speaking of GSOC, um, so yeah, I talked to Terry with the Python org, and it sounds like we're good to go for this year. Um, I need to go and post some of the project ideas. Obviously, we've got a lot of stuff in there now, so um, we've got um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff going on in there. So I don't know exactly what all the project ideas will be, um, like you know the sample ideas. But of course, we're always open open to whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go update that wiki page soon. So um, and then yeah, so did we have anybody else have anything they want to talk about? Yeah, so uh, I was uh, I was I am working on that MNIST uh, data set, right? Yes, yes. So you comment, uh, you uh, tagged me in something like uh, for the DFFML base dot pi. Oh, the config you... stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I I've been trying to get around to explaining that more completely. Last um, week you said uh, there was no time, so. Oh yeah, this then, was then, so then, this. Then this week was a little busy for me too. Yeah. So this this is I tried to explain it with this comment here, but I that was also probably not super clear. The problem is this is kind of hard to explain. Um, I'll take another stab at it here, but. So what we're looking at here is basically, uh, and it's probably better to just show maybe what the command line arguments would look like. I didn't get through posting them up there. So git uh, branch dash r, what do we got here? Um, OK, I don't have your branch up here. So let's see, where is your branch? I think you uh, made some changes, so you 
have the branch. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, damn. Ah, why does it do this? It keeps showing like things that didn't, that are already in master as upcoming changes for this pull request. GitHub. Yeah, I just noticed that I was yeah. just going through it. Yeah, I don't know why GitHub does that sometimes. It's weird. Um, okay, this is well. This is not going to help me um, get to what I need. <laughs> All right, let's see. So basically, okay, I can explain a little bit while I'm pulling it up. But so the idea with this was that we could create that long term we would create some kind of source that takes a data flow and using that data flow does some arbitrary pre-processing on the data as you're feeding it into the model right and so for everybody else who wasn't uh, uh, looped in on this uh, what we're doing is is uh, Saksham is working on the um, the MNIST model and the handwritten digits and so that stuff is basically giant arrays of, uh, of numbers from 0 to 255 um, and those represent like the uh, from completely white to completely black pixels like the grayscale um, in, in like that they're, range. they're colorful uh, for RGB I grayscaled it to show like yeah yeah so so yeah so so you load you load those basically those those massive arrays that that um, that contain the grayscale values. Um, and then once you have those in, you train the model on that. Well, a lot of people who do this show an example that in their example that that they uh, they uh, normalize the whole uh, every every array. So you basically scale those zero to 255 values from zero to one. Um, as a fraction or as a as a float, right? Um, so what we need is we need the ability to sort of like do this on the fly, and so the idea is that we would um, is that we would um, provide a source which, as its config, takes another source, right? And this is where like these nested configs are helpful. So we can basically say this source wraps some other source, and when you get data from that other source, I want you to pre-process this, like I want you to take this feature that you're going to get for each record, for each repo, and I want you to pre-process that feature by running this operation on it, right? And so we're going to specify that the feature data itself should be one of the inputs, right? So we need, we need a couple arguments to this thing. We basically need to define this like dict mapping where we can do arbitrary feature names, which are strings, to some sort of structure, right, which is like a regular config structure like we have already all over the place. And that config structure would contain things like the operation name um, that we want to run for pre-processing, um, the name of the input that the feature should go to, the feature data itself should go to, and then it should also contain within itself, it would need another mapping to grab all the other arbitrary inputs um, that that operation could could have and map the uh, map those to sort of values given on the command line, so it's like hard-coded values basically. So if we're doing this like um, divide operation, right, this normalize operation um, for the image data, we would want to pass, um, and this is where I want to write this down, um, so Also, like uh, yeah. I, I trained the model with only like hundred, hundred arrays. Yeah. And and also tested it with hundred arrays. Also, then then I uh, 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 made uh, predicted the output. Uh -huh. And the and it's a it's a dictionary mapping, right? So it uh, outputs like all the arrays, uh, the all the seven eighty four. Uh, array elements yeah on the command line oh yeah um yeah yeah it dumps it yeah whatever you whatever you ask it to run a prediction for it it will 
able to export as JSON. So that's um, also weird some working. Yeah, we don't have to. We could add a setting that basically says like don't output to the command line, right? Um, we could we could have we could implement something that was different, like output modes, right? We could do dump to CSV. We could be like just display the prediction, don't display the input data, um, right? Like maybe just display the index and what the prediction for that index is. Um, but yeah, right now obviously it's just very rudimentary. It's like okay, here's your input data, here's your output data. In case you forgot what it is, um, it includes your input data plus the prediction, right? Because um, that made it easy to just really serialize and deserialize that JSON. Um, so, but yeah, obviously if you are, <laughs> it is not the most convenient thing if you have these giant arrays. So we could add some. Uh, that could be something that we could do here. That would be good. Is let me make an issue for that. Um, uh, okay. um, so let's see. All right. Um, this would be in util CLI command. Um, uh, specify add ability to output in different formats and different amounts of data all right because that's what we're finding here is basically that's way too much data we don't care uh, we care what is the index in that input and then you know what what's the label or what's the predicted um so right now output of prediction is dumping json of repo objects to uh, st st standard out. Um, we should prove this to not dump feature data if requested or if, yeah, if requested. We should also support output formats other than JSON. All right. Um, yeah, so you could start on this if you wanted to here. Because um, what was it? We were stuck on something here. Um, what were we? What were we currently on with this one? It's been a while. Uh, like we were uh, the, con the the FFML base config stuff. Oh yeah, great. Oh yeah, and that's why we're talking about this. Sorry, I'm still getting back in the swing of things. Um, let's see. Been working on other things. Let's see. So high priority, and this will probably be medium. Okay. Let me check this out. No. Keep doing it. All right. Um, okay, and so now I was going to show so docs usage mnist. Okay. Mm, where's that example? Okay, yeah, and so this is the example where we have. Okay, and I started it here, but it wasn't really super flushed out. So, can you guys see well enough here? Uh, yes. I wonder if this will. Help. No. Okay. Didn't help. All right. Okay. So in this, it's in this. This is basically like the changed command where we'd be throwing the preprocessing right in front of reading the data from the source, right? And so we'd say images equals the source type of preprocess, and then the images source, uh, the source for right this config property that is the source is idx3 so it notes i'm going to load the idx3 source and then you specify the file name for the idx3 source and the feature so basically we just nest this one level in um, so that the source loads its own source that it's actually going to pull from and then we say you know source images and then this is the the first level dictionary um, and in that first level dictionary uh, whatever that that is called, like this might be something like, I make this a little more normalize. Yeah, so so this might be uh, this would be like features features 
um, image, and then op is array normalize. So features image, um, and then let's see. Um, uh, what is a good name for this? Um, input name feature goes into. So this would be like array. So if we look at and then we'll define array normalize here. So that, that's clear too. So input, let's see, data. No, that's very nondescript. Um, let's see, uh, feature. Let's just call it feature. So the feature goes to array and then the um, inputs. And then we'd have something like, so inputs would be another dictionary. And the, uh, so let's see, five or denominator would be 255, right? So we're going to, and I'll get rid of this. So, and then I'll show you what this config structure here looks like. So, all right. So this at config um, for preprocess config. And then we'd have something like source, which is of type base source, right? Um, and then we have, um, so that, and this is where we're loading. So source equals IDX3 with file name equals train images through UBIT and feature equals image, right? Does that make sense? Uh, yes. So this maps to this right here. Um, okay. and then let's make that abundantly clear here. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's what's going on there, right? Because that's how we specify these things on the command line is, you know, what's the plugin name? And now, okay, now what's the arguments for that plugin? Um, and then we'd have this features dict, so features, which would be dict stir, um, and then let's add this up here. So, Any. Yeah, well, let's see. So, Some, uh, yeah, this would be the, um, you know, pre-process op, and So then this configuration is something like, you know, the operation. Um, so op would be operation. And then, you know, it'll load the operation there. So this actually, this should go up. Uh, yeah, well, I'll put it up here too, so it's more clear. So this is operation, right? And then this would be feature would be some string, um, uh, and this is the, uh, so this is the feature or input name, let's see, operation, so this is the operation input name of operation input feature uh, is passed to. Does that make sense? So basically, like the image feature, which is, you know, this this is, we keyed off image here. So let's see, eh, how do I make this even more clear? Um, we keyed off image in this features dict, right? So this is the, this key here, right? So here's features and here's, this is the features. So this, anything after this dash here, this stuff all goes in this dict, right? Oh, okay, and yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so image is the key, and then the values map into this config here. And so op becomes array normalized, which will get loaded as the actual operation. Um, 
and then feature becomes array, and then we need another one of these um, dict to mapping things. So, but this is probably just dict to any, right? Um, and so this one is going to be, let's see, this will end up being denominator 255. This is and this is why it was hard to explain. <laughs> it's hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, it's kind of hard to parse, right? Um, and it will be hard to parse literally when we have to write the parsing code. Um, so, and this one is so set paste. Um, so this would be array, mm, and this would be you know. Oops, where are we? Okay, and this is array normalize, um, and the inputs are. Uh, let's see. So, well, and this calls the entry point loading stuff. So this ends up being just like IDX three gets loaded to be an actual plugin. Um, you just say array normalize, and it looks up those entry points for the operations, and it loads the correct one. So you you know you'll you'll have the right um, data here. So array normalize. Yeah. Um, this will go into dffml base dot by. Yes. Um, well, so this this stuff won't. So this goes into these classes. Wait, why are you not giving me my comments? Okay. Um, oh, because that's a they're tabs, silent tabs. Above, so these classes, no paste. These classes should go in dffml source slash preprocess py. Um, then you need, so you need to, the trick here is you need to modify. Um, dffml slash base.py to understand what to do or to understand how to properly load load and populate these structures when they are encountered encountered or Dict. Uh, uh, what's the, let's see. Load and populate dict args when they are encountered. Okay, and so this is so this is this right? And let me let me show you where that's going to end up looking like. Um, so df of ml base. Um, okay, so in here, there's some some configuration code has been cleaned up, but basically this is what happens: is for all the documentation stuff, right? We have to output for all the documentation, like knowing what type everything is through all of this stuff. We we have these args and config methods, and then we replace them with this auto args and config stuff. So when that happened, this got consolidated a little bit to these basically these two functions. So this one says, okay, what are the things that this field is by parsing that config object, right? Um, and this one says, okay, given that config object and some value, some data type, uh, what do I do with it, right? How do I turn that value that was given to me onto the command line into the class, you know, into an instance of whatever class, uh, of whatever type that, that argument is supposed to be, right? So that might do something like, um, you know, ooh, where is it doing that? Uh, type class, yeah, I think. Um, Wait a minute, convert value. Oh, I think this needs the stuff from master merged in. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh oh. Is config dict? Where is next config dict used? Okay, from dict. Okay. 
weird things may happen here um, <laughs> because this is this is why that unify args and config issue is up because there's there's like some of this code is in from dict some of it's in convert value it all needs to be like in the same place um, so you Everything might run into that yeah at the same time badly yeah because or else or else you in like it starts running through these different code paths and like things don't work right um, but you will find out when you start to do this. <laughs> um, so, and and what I might suggest first is that we just get this working without pre-processing first. Like you basically, you tidy up this tutorial and you show how it works and then you open another pro pull request and we do the pre-processing, right? Because okay. this is like, it's it's usable now, right? It doesn't, the accuracy yeah, it, name it, may it's... not be great, but it works. Right. Accuracy is great when we normalize. Yeah, the, when you normalize. The exactly. So we'll basically we'll get this into master, and then we'll add the normalization of the array support because this stuff where we're messing with config stuff, it could take a while, and we don't want to like you know we want to get that source into the main code base um, because the source works right. You, the source works. Um, you figured yeah, so... out how to do the parsing correctly. Yeah, the it is it is working. Also, what I wanted to say was, uh, I I forgot. A, a, one second. No worries. Oh no, my PC is running low. So yeah, uh, the code is working, right? So I I'll add that read mode, write mode stuff. Okay. So that the bytes can be read for the IDX source files, and then we'll open the new pull request for pre-processing stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's yeah, let's make so let's make a note of this. So um x three uh git source merged uh with tutorial with poor accuracy. Uh also like then... uh when when we train and test the uh, the files that is the, uh, the we don't have anything else to for the prediction stuff what do you mean like when uh when we train on that uh, 60,000 arrays yeah 60,000 images and then we test on 10,000 images uh-huh we don't have anything to predict uh predict oh yeah uh, we don't have the... anything to predict on yeah that's true um um yeah uh that's that? what making me like uh, uh, very confused about this thing, right? Oh yeah. So what you could do is, um, uh, what is a grayscale? Is there a grayscale image format? Because let's see. I wonder if there's like a specific image format that. Uh, uh, what is the BMP for? Sixteen. Images. Okay. Yeah, we want some sort of image format that maybe BMP is in code files and plot. Or if you don't use one, you can interpret color values to zero through two hundred fifty-five as colors like. Um, okay, so maybe we can load BMP images fine. Um, doesn't really help them with this. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just thinking TIFF MP to 16 bit. Yeah, we really only want 8 bits. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to be able to say, like, take a PNG of some image and then, uh, you know, run it through here as the prediction, right? And in that case, I think what you want to do is uh, we talked about adding support for the CSV file, um, the CSV source, to go through and look at column name, like, provide a list of column names that it should load as data from some, uh, from, uh, um, um, God damn it! From 
basically if it sees like a file name it should go and load that file name and then parse it using something right and i think we missed the part i don't think the issue captures the part that we need to parse it using something right and so we have these uh config loaders right now and they already sort of assume binary data um so what you could do is you could implement um let's write this down so So let's see. Um, uh, do the okay, and where'd that issue go? Because that would be good to track. Basically, okay. Where's that issue? Um, CSV. Okay. Load data from file name. Okay. Um, okay, so let's modify this and then we'll just capture it all in here. So let's, so, okay, so for adding a section on to, or let's see, that to tutorial uh, on prediction, um, complete the CSV source modification and addition of config loader for some image format that we can um, use. Maybe that PMP. All right. So if you look at the config loader code, um where was that actually and ooh we may have just done that um Agen, did we merge that stuff yet with the load file or is that still in that branch uh which one the config loader i guess we merged it but okay, we uh, the merge. example usage i didn't think we did sorry what uh we merged the config file uh, but if you're talking about how we use it in the sklog we haven't done that okay I I'm think, guessing you are talking about the first one. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about the first one. Yeah, exactly. So, because as long as we have that load file method, like with the config loaders, that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. Because yeah. if we have this, this will be great. Um, so this, or well, this is yeah, this is dirconf. Okay, and I think yeah, we have load file. Okay, great. So let me copy that syntax from your newer pull request. It's not merged. Um, and then that's basically what we'll do here. Um, oh, geez, it's going to load like 4,000 lines as if they all changed. Great. Um, OK, so Agen recently implemented this uh, thing that basically you can use this config loaders class. And then you call the load file method. And it'll just look at the file extension and determine the correct config loader to load. Um, so if you make a config loader that knows how to read a BMP file, then you can parse that BMP file into this format that's the same array format that you've already got. And so if someone basically takes like a, uh, if someone can, can get a BMP file that has their number um, in it, right, then you could, um, uh, you could, Actually, you might want to just do like a PNG file because no one's going to be able to create a BMP file. <laughs> um, and then make it so that it's explicitly just that many bytes. So you might want to just like make one that loads PNGs and then converts like that that can do, uh, let's see, I don't know. If you could, if you, I don't know. You need to figure out how to make a PNG that's only grayscale, right? So just just look at one of these images like maybe just screenshot it and make it a PNG. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, see if you can get a picture of a digit. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you, you can complete the sentence, then I'll uh, okay. talk about that. Yeah, so basically you need you need a picture of a handwritten digit. Um, you need a picture of a handwritten digit in some file format. 
And then you need, um, let's see. And then you need to write a config loader, which, um, so C config slash YAML. 